What's up everybody, my name is David. Welcome to week four. Let's talk about week three, and then we'll talk about week four. But thank you for joining me. If you aren't aware, this is an eight team rebuild, slow sim, but every game gets simmed. Um, but we focus on eight franchises. Uh, they all finished in the bottom half of the league last year. So uh, there's plenty to catch up on, so many videos. Uh, like I said, this is week four. We have three weeks of gameplay, simulation, every game just cut and dry. There's also a new video coming out. It may be out already. Um, I tried to do a red zone and it was too much work, like a ridiculous amount of work. And it's already a lot of work to record all these videos and then upload them. And uh, so I did a video of every TD that was scored in week three. We're gonna try that. That was a little bit quicker, I, I could do that. Um, so we'll, we'll work up to the red zone. Very hard. Uh, there's so much editing and then you gotta go back over it a couple times and add the commentary. It's, it's crazy how much work it is and depending on the week, like week one I did it and there wasn't as much action and I also didn't know what I was doing. And I, had all, I was sick one day and it took all day to do it. And then I went to do it week two. There was like all these problems with recording and audio. So I was behind and I was like, I don't have time for this. And then like, I still wrote out like the sheet, the plan. And it would have been, it would have been an, a crazy video to edit. Cause there was a lot of scoring and, and a lot of red zone trips. So I'm drinking my coffee here early in the morning, recording this video, it's some gourmet shit. Let me tell you, I love my coffee. Um, before we get into week four though, let's look at what everyone wants to see is awards, stats, and uh, results. So, Jordan Love got the NFC Offensive Player of the Week, and Bland got the NFC defensive player with two interceptions. And then we have A-Chain. I mean, A-Chain, excuse me, went off. Absolutely went off. 154 yards rushing, three touchdowns rushing, four for 41, and one reception touchdown. He had a, uh, had a freaking day. And uh, <laughs> we've seen Miami running backs do that last season. And... It, I mean, he put up a pretty similar line there. That's insane. How many DraftKings points would it be? Uh, 15.4. Then he would get three points for going over 100 yards. So that's 18.4. 24 .4, 30.4, 36.4. 36.4 plus 4. 40. A 44.1. So he had 50.1. 50, 50 he had 50, 50 uh, DraftKings points. I used to love playing DraftKings and all that stuff, man. So uh, he had a day. He had a 50 burger on DraftKings. It's insane. And then our franchise focus player, uh, Jabril Peppers, three sacks, 14 tackles as a strong safety so getting after it for the Patriots but the Patriots are 0-3 so they had a lot of sacks last week he wasn't the only one but not enough to win they gotta do better They're, they have a the Patriots are my worst team right now of the franchise focus teams and they have a scheme change all around which we will talk about and also upgrade it edit it uh their quarterback, their rookie QB. If you don't know who he is, go check him out. But maybe we'll see. When we look at the uh, the stats here, the results, Drake May is their quarterback. See how we drafted him, where we drafted him. Uh, all right, let's look at the schedule from last week. We started off with two franchise-focused teams playing on Thursday Night Football. J 
Joe Burrow in that Jets playbook two weeks in a row going over 350. Don't like the two interceptions, but when you throw a lot, that's what happens. Uh, I believe Mixon got hurt. And we had Felton and Chase Brown in. But look at these carries. And, and these guys aren't high overall. And generally, you like to, you have to have your uh, running back have a high overall for him to do well in a running game. But Johnny Wilson gets over the 100-yard mark and gets, his, I believe, his first touchdown. But he's been over 90 yards every week. Aronde Gadsden, a little undersized weight-wise, but 6'5", tight end. Rookie Odunes, better better game. You know, he'd, he'd not been putting in the uh, yards and the receptions, but he did get his first touchdown last week. Jamar Chase, underwhelming game, but still got in the box. So Mixon, this Charlie Jones guy gets in, involved here. But, you know, a lot of throwing there for Mr. Burrow. Love him. Logan Wilson, he's playing a uh, middle linebacker, I believe, for us. I moved him there. Woozy, Eric Carter gets his first sack. DJ Reader, Miles Murphy's, uh, I think, had at least a sack every game. So, our defense playing well. Let's talk about our other franchise folks team, Jaden Daniels. Um, okay, they got their first win last week. They blew out. What was it? The Jets, I believe. T. Higgins with a revenge game touchdown. I forgot to mention that in the last podcast. T. Higgins. Just not a great game. They need a, a playbook change at some point, I think, on offense. Just not utilizing his weapons enough. James Williams, 6'5", safety. He had like a 96-yard interception touchdown, which was pretty nice. So, there you go. That was a decent game. Colts are rolling. They're 3-0. Anthony Richardson not throwing so much, but he is a weapon in the running game. They're in the Colts playbook, of course. And uh, that's... That's pretty much the Eagles playbook. Yeah, his, his weapons just, uh, it's all about Anthony Richardson. Just like it's pretty much all just about uh, Jalen Hurts in that system. Kenny Moore with a nice interception. After, after the Steelers beat um, the Chargers in week two on a last. 32nd of the game, touchdown by uh, Derrick Henry. They came back to earth here. 13 for 21. Yikes. Yeah. You know, maybe maybe, maybe they're still a 500 team. That's what their coach does. They get sacks. But Colts are kind of rolling here. Another team that's kind of rolling their 2-1, the Packers. The Packers. Jordan Love went over 300 yards, two touchdowns, an interception. Aaron Jones looks really good. Jordan Love getting it in on the ground as well. Christian Watson had a big catch for a touchdown. Jaden Reed got his first touchdown. Romeo Dobbs, Dubs, whatever you want to call him, just, you know, solid moving the chain there. Chains. Their defense is playing well, really well. They've given up the least amount of passing yards, and uh, they're getting the after, they're getting after it here. Yeah, they are playing with, with really well. But also, the Vikings suck. I mean, their offense isn't playing well. They had put up 38 points last week in the overtime tie game on Thursday Night Football. And um, they're not playing well. Their defense is really bad. Really, really bad. So, don't take too much from what teams do against them as far as overvaluing what that team is because their defense is just awful. 
They don't. They have undersized DNs, I believe, for three, four. So they're in trouble. Our Patriots with a heartbreaker. Tough, tough start for them. I mean, every game's tough, but they started with Miami, the Bills, and they just lost this game to the Rams in, in the like final minute, I believe, on a field goal. Drake May, he needs to cut back on the interceptions. Couldn't get the ball going on the ground. Zico Elliott, look at this, six for 87. Darnell Mooney with two. The wide receivers aren't really doing nothing. Tycoon Thornton is just awful. I moved their, I did a lot of moving around on them. I believe Jabril Peppers is playing in the slot a lot when he got these sacks. Marpu with a 95 yard interception touchdown. Yeah, he's a big boy, he's a big boy. And the Rams. Stafford over 350. He's like second in the league in passing yards. Oh, they really can't get anything going on the ground. Oh, wow. They picked up Antonio Gibson. I mean, they brought in a lot of free agents here. They brought in Hopkins, Odell Beckham, his best game of the season so far. They're old heads. You know, they got an old quarterback, and they got Cup, who's older. Hopkins is older, Odell's hold, older, Puka is getting his growth retarded here by DeAndre Hopkins. That stinks. Bobby Brown. I remember young, I think he has like a sack every game. Good young talent. So there you go with them. Saints and the Commanders, ugly game here. Justin Fields, he hasn't really gotten going yet. Did not. He's in the Eagles playbook. We're gonna have to probably change it up going going forward. I might move him into uh, the Colts playbook, which is the Eagles playbook. But I really think that they have a uh, a different game plan as far as like what plays get called and in which situations. That I think that is totally different. Oh, that cough is good, but. They get a win, and they're leading the NFC East, so good for our commanders. Yeah, um, they're free agent Mike Kosicki. I think it's his second touchdown. It might be his first, but they're, the weapons really haven't gotten going here. Shame. Xavier Worthy. Jeez. Xavier Worthless. Oh, man, John Adams would be calling him Xavier Worthless right now because this man should be... Playing much better. But I guess their defense is playing good. Chop Robinson. I think he has a sack a game. Their first round pick. Fuller. Eric Forrest. Saints. Slide of more. A.T. Perry. He's a big boy. Malik Neighbors. Alave. Yeah, they came back to down to earth a little bit on their offense. I mean, Derek Carr's so mid. So mid, I don't think he's mid. You know, you know. Mars now mid, I think. They're just not playing well. This was an upset alert. Jets needed a defensive game to beat the Bills. The Bills look like uh, they're steamrolling people here. Like they were... Going to really go to be one of those teams that go to three and zero, and uh, I don't know what the Jets did, but I guess they did defensively because they got after it. Ooh, the rookie! Look at this guy! Wow, I missed that going through the games. <laughs> Boy, they held Josh Allen in check. That's the only way they were going to win. They weren't going to outscore the Bills. So good for them. They needed that win. That was desperation right there. They were one of the teams. Saved their season for now. 
unfortunate here for our other focus team. Another one, Kale Williams. He's uh, like third, I think, in overall passing yards. Playing well. He's at, they're in the Miami playbook. J.K. Dobbins is playing very well, too. D.J. Moore is playing well. Morton Harrison is playing well. Brandon Rice, a not, really nice rookie, is a... Uh, Forced into action, but I don't mind him being forced into action because uh, they're signing Rashid Shaheed is out. And uh, I wonder what this offense is going to look like when Shaheed comes back because Shaheed got hurt like early in the first game, which uh, the Bears scored 45 points in. So, uh, yeah. Their offense is decent, but they gave up the points. But I, I'll, I'll say this. Um, Trevor Lawrence and Trevor Lawrence and uh, the Jaguars is absolutely the rolling man. Three and zero. Trevor Lawrence, you know, that's his only interception of the year. He's leading the league in touchdowns. He's got like ten and one. Bigsby is playing well. Whoever's their starting running back is playing well, and Bigsby was in for uh, the injured. ETN Calvin Ridley is leading the league in touchdowns. Not yards, but he's close. Uh, he's got six touchdowns, two touchdowns, three games. Evan Ingram with a game. Uh, it's a nice playbook. Really nice. One of one of my franchise focus teams is gonna get that. One of I should say our franchise focus teams. And their defense is playing lights out. Absolutely lights out. So the Jags, man, I don't know what, what got into them, but the Jags are off to a great start. You saw watching, really nice game, almost 350 yards. Another another running back couldn't get going. I think that was a theme this week of some running backs just going nowhere. Elijah Moore, he's doing well. Amika Ibuka, uh, I heard he's not coming out this year, so, oh well, but he made it in this draft. Chubb, in this realm, uh, he came out. Chubb, Chubb had a good game. This Nesbitt kid's playing well. I think Njoku got hurt. But the Browns, uh, I believe, are 3-0 and as well. We'll, we'll look at the uh, standings. But they're a force to be reckoned with. Michael Penix Jr. had a really nice first game. He's, you know, I think he had a lot of drops. I think his wide receivers had a ton of drops. They, yeah, not a good game for them. But you're playing the Browns defense, and you got some really good defenders there. Of course, I mean their defense isn't too shabby either. To be honest, especially with the addition of Khalil Mack. This is a really good game. Another team that's playing really well under a rookie QB. They got a lot of veterans there. It's just JJ McCarthy stepped in. Just gotta do what he's gotta do. Uh, Rashad White. It's the system, man. He's leading the league in, in rushing. It's not like he's a high overall running back and he's got a lot of abilities. He's, it's just the system. And he's doing really well. Four touchdowns on the year. He's leading the league in rushing. And uh, this is actually, I think, a really nice playbook. It's, it seems like a winning playbook. Balanced winning playbook. And whoever your running back is is going to have a nice day. And, of course, their defense has players on it. Shaquille Barrett, I believe, is having a really nice season. And uh, their defense is one of the best defenses, I believe, in the league. We'll, we'll make sure about that. Uh, sorry, let's go back here. And then the Falcons. Desmond Ritter really can't throw, man. That's his first throwing touchdown of the year. <laughs> I mean, they ran all over. Who did they play last week? I can't remember. So many games, dude. But, you know, they both... Ran for like almost four yards combined and four touchdowns, and that's not happening this this year. This this week, it did not happen. 
Patrick Bourne to be alive. Kyle Pitts hasn't got going. So they're in, they're uh, across the board. They're in a uh, a created head coach. It's not I didn't create him. It was just like an assistant coach guy that took over because their head coach got fired. And uh, they rock both Baltimore schemes there in Atlanta. Not working out so well. Philly heartbreaker. They were up. They were up. Um, I guess Hurts got hurt. This KJ Jefferson came in. I don't like. I went through that game. And I just don't remember seeing that happen. I kind of skimmed through it. Tyler Boyd had a nice week. But. Geez. AJ Brown, man, just not playing well. And part of it is their offensive line issues. We're going to talk about it a lot, but they never replaced Lane Johnson in the draft. And uh, I mean, they did later in the draft, but not a serious change there. And uh, the left tackle they brought in, or right tackle, I'm sorry, for Lane Johnson retiring, not good. And they had to replace uh, Kelsey, and they didn't do that. And it's just really hampering them. And they're, I don't, I don't know. I mean, they're not playing well in their playbook, and neither are the commanders playing well in their playbook. So, I don't know what's going on. But, I'm definitely getting out of that playbook for the, for the commanders, for sure. You know, they had, they had like really big games. Look at this, another one, 12 for 9. I guess the uh, CPU was like, we need to make sure we uh, keep some of these running backs in check. I have fucking no idea. Or abilities and playbooks just matter that much, but. Yeah, I, I, this, this you know, if you know anything, this is the best sim playbook, quick sim playbook. And it, I don't think it's particularly great in slow sim, but that means to be seen. Their defense, and Michael Parsons. They're just, their defense is good. Deron Bland. Uh, after getting cooked by them in the playoffs, looks like he had a nice nice bounce back there. But they're two higher overall teams. Philly's, Philly has a layup on Monday night or Sunday night football. They got to win. They're playing uh, a winless team, I believe. They got a, what looks like a layup. Unfortunate here for our Carolina Panthers. I think they were a two-point conversion away from tying the game. Bryce Young throwing over 300 yards a game in uh, that run-and-shoot playbook. I don't really like their tight ends. And uh, they got four wide receivers I want to build up. And uh, they got four wide receivers on the field at all times. And they don't rush the ball too many times. Although, this is probably the most they rush so far this season. And they rush effectively. And the one thing about it, having four wide receivers on the team on the field at all times and the running backs is that uh, like they're always in the block. They don't go out to receive that much. But Terrace Marshall is absolutely cooking the world right now. Uh, he's leading the league in uh, definitely receiving yards from his last two games and maybe receptions. I did make some moves. I switched. So on the depth chart, it, go, it went Burton, Mingo, Hardman, Marshall in that order. But then Mingo and Marshall were, were the starting slot wide receivers on that part of the depth chart. And, I mean, Marshall's going, but Mingo's not doing anything. Burton had a really nice first game, hasn't done anything since. Hardman's starting to pick it up a little bit. So I switched Burton and Mingo to see if that helps at all on the overall depth chart. That remains to be seen. But you see there's no tight ends that get any any play there. They're just fucking throwing all the, time, the whole time. Their defense is getting after a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, they had that nice upset one over Philly after Philly missed that game-winning field goal. And they've lost two straight. But they've had a tough start. Mayfield, bounce back game a little bit here. Josh Jacobs getting in there. But, I mean, not. it looked like uh, after week one that maybe the Raiders playbook, whatever they're using, I think they saw Josh McDaniels, was the playbook because he threw for almost, almost 
the most amount of yards that week, and uh, that was not the case the last two weeks. But the Raiders, I believe, got their first win. Unfortunate for us, Kansas City is Kansas City. Mahomes throwing has the most passing yards in the week. Yeah, it does have a little too many interceptions for my liking. And he doesn't have the amount of uh, passing touchdowns that Trevor Lawrence has. That might even out. You know, there's always regression to the means, both positively and negatively. You know, no one's going to throw for with 60 touchdowns, 70 touchdowns. I mean, I'm sure it could happen depending what fucker you do, but Sky Moore, who had uh, a season last year where he was referred to as Sky Snore, he did absolutely nothing, but because they moved on from MVS, that put Tony to the starting wide receiver spot along with Rasheed Rice, and then that put Sky Moore in the slot where most people think he should play. So, get it done here. Kelsey's Kelsey, you know. Broncos. Just a bad team. They're not, they don't have Sean Payton anymore. I. I don't know what playbook they're in, but it sucks, and they suck. Uh, what's his name? Javante Williams is out. He's hurt. I mean, they got old-ass Zach Ertz as tight end. Jaleel McLaughlin Laughlin, or whatever his name is. Let's just look at these scrubs, dude. Bad. Just bad. I think I mean, their defense. Fletcher Cox is like... <laughs> I think he's got a, at least a sack a game. Good for him. Kool-Aid McKinistry. McKinstry? Whatever his name is, he got his first interception. So, uh, but the Broncos have a tough matchup this week, I believe. Our Cardinals getting it done. This, is a, this turned out to be a weird game. Kyler Murray, he's also in the um, Ravens offensive playbook. And, I mean, he had a nice run. Him Akers has a nice day. Jayla Wright, a nice little backup. One of the fastest running backs drafted this year. Xavier Leggett, the freak. His best game, I guess, so far. But I might switch Leggett and Brown, I think. I think that's just the one need I need to make for now. Maybe I'll get them going. Samal Mondon, whatever his name is, he's like leading the league in tackles. And we made a little move where we put on uh, pass rushing downs. We moved uh, Dietrich Wise into that spot there and moved out on one of our rookies. It was just, I think it was Jenkins who was playing that, just not playing well enough. I mean, Dietrich Wise is a little light, but you guys got a sack in his first time there. Poe, two straight games with an interception. John Thompson gets an interception. But this like game just died in the second half. Talk about bad playbooks and bad players. Jared Goff is not having a good start to the season. Montgomery's still out. Yeah, I mean, they have Williams, Amari Cooper, and St. Brett, excuse me, St. Brown, just underperforming team, to say the least. This Pascal guy's having a nice year. Brandon Graham, he looks so fat. <laughs> if you watch that game, when he gets a sack, man, he looks absolutely fat. <laughs> he looks like a 350-pound lineman. But uh, yeah, just not a not a good start for the Lions here. Great game, great win for us. This is probably the game, one of the games of the week. Back and forth, our Chargers. Herbert, you know, not happy with the two interceptions, but Travion Henderson is uh, right behind Rashad White as one of the best backs, and probably would have got Offensive Player of the uh, Week if it was not for. A chain going nuclear. 
Mike Williams, a nice game. Joshua Palmer, just steady Eddie. Nice to get Quentin Johnson going a little bit more. Stovar, just a nice little check down guy. Trayvon Henderson. So, Trayvon Henderson and Rashad White, probably two of the best backs this year. And just, like I said, they're, they're not high overalls, you know? They're not low, like super low, but their systems produ are producing. Uh, I don't think they've, this is, their defense is not great right now as far as producing stats. Two game skid here for Lamar Jackson and the Ravens. I mean, Lamar can run the ball. They, they can run the ball. And if you think about it, as far as running back and quarterback wise, I, I think it's a good fit for us in the Cardinals to have them in this playbook because um, Kyler Murray is just as fast as Lamar. Elijah Mitchell took over for a, a departed free agent Gus Bus who had a really nice playoffs and really carried them into winning the championship last year so and we got that guy there with um, oh, what's, his, what's his name the running back I can't remember the running back we signed him in free agency sorry so many names but and then you have the little speed guy Keaton Mitchell and that's uh, uh, right who we drafted so we have the, the setup there and I think that we kind of have similar offensive players as the Ravens here as far as what they have set up speed-wise and size-wise. Yeah. We had to outscore them, and that's what the uh, Chargers did. Came down to the uh, Baltimore needing a two-point conversion to tie the game. It didn't happen. So go check that game out. That was a good game if you like scoring. The 49ers is rolling, man. Absolutely rolling. Who was who that guy? Don't know. But uh, we like our white running backs, apparently. Surprised they didn't get Will Shipley. That would have been a nice fit there. Debo's picking it up, starting to pick up a little bit. bit. Braden Willis is a second year guy and he's starting for an injured Kittle. So he is having a decent game. Ronnie Bell is now the slot third wide receiver guy because um, what's his name? Who was, I thought was going to be the Super Bowl MVP. Uh, Juwan Jennings is gone he's still a free agent no one wanted him I think they have his speed too slow for as good as he is Armstead Young I mean Hargrave their defense gets after it. it's so good and the Seahawks are so bad they're no longer in the Seattle offense Geno Smith sucks their playbook sucks Kent Walker is not playing well they don't have a great offensive line Metcalf is just having as disappointing a year as A.J. Brown. And Jake was four for 64 every every week pretty much, not, not doing anything. Yeah, the Seattle's one of those teams that they're shit. Absolutely crap. How about another team that's absolutely rolling? The Dolphins. Tua didn't have to do much because Devon A. Chain, like I said, put up a 50 burger in DraftKings and uh, went nuclear. Just, excuse me, A. Chain got in player of the week offensively. 9.6 yards to carry. It's a great playbook, man. Waddle is having a great year. Don A. Mitchell playing nicely, filling in. Uh, I guess he's in the slot and he's the third wide receiver right now because Tyreek is still out and Jalen Waddle, the Penguins playing well. Cedric Wilson he's a really nice player in this system um, yeah, it, Adane Mitchell would be uh, playing more if it wasn't for Cedric Wilson as overall and then, I mean, they have a nice guy here, Jay 
Tavion Sanders whenever they need him. He had a nice week last week, getting his first touchdown, I believe. Of course, their defense is balling. And the Texans are really not playing well. It's regression, man. CJ Stroud had such a nice year last year, and he's just not playing well this year. He's got two superstar wide receivers in Tank Dell and Nico Collins, who I think I got he got hurt in that game. I don't remember, I'm not exactly sure. I skimmed through I eventually watched these. But uh I'm so far I'm so far ahead right now. Like I could release Maybe, may, maybe I could release two weeks a week, which would move us faster. But there's so many games to watch. You guys can't keep up with them. So right now I'm releasing the the games weekly. I, you know, it's just you guys can't catch up fast enough. I'm trying to give you time. Uh, and that was uh, that was a Monday night game. So. Let's look at, I'm going to sneeze, look at the standings here, <sighs> bless me, thank you, yeah, Niners are on a roll, Dolphins are on, on a roll, <clears throat> Colts 3-0, Chiefs 3-0, Jaguars 3-0, Broncos 3-0, I think I misspoke and said they were 2-1, but these teams right here, uh, looking good, and then, the Eagles are the worst team. <laughs> wow. Dude, I mean, they got out of their, uh, what they do. And that's, uh, that's offensive line. See, they're worse than the Seattle. They're bad. These are, I think the, pa the Patriots aren't as bad as that record. That's, that's a shame. Vikings are terrible. They should be 0-3, but they got that stupid tie. Saints mid. Giants, uh, I think they're around a 500 team. Came, Lions probably even, shouldn't even have that win. Cowboys are way better. Ravens are way better. Uh, hopefully, Panthers are a 500 team. Who knows about the Raiders? The Texans should be better. I think the Cardinals are scrappy, but they might be a 500 team. Bears are definitely better, in my opinion. Aaron Rodgers is 40. Who knows, man? Titans, maybe 500 team. 500 team. Falcons, I think, are sneaky. Rams, old and wise. Bills are forced. Packers look really good. Bengals look really good. Commanders, uh, they're lucky to be 2-1 and leading the division right now. Let's see if that stays. I think Chargers, Chargers, they're going to charge. They're going to have their bad games, but they're going to have their good games. So, you know, we got two franchises, I think, are our hope for a Super Bowl this year, and that's the Bengals and the Chargers. Let's see if we can keep them going. Stats. Stats. Everyone loves stats, baby. So we'll, we'll go with these quickly. This video is getting long. Passing. Leading in yards. Patrick Mahomes. Touchdowns. Trevor Lawrence. I mean, 81% completion percentage. Two is right behind him. But he's only at 61%. That's crazy. That might that might go up. I mean, what happens when Tyree comes back? That's just insane, dude. Yeah, see, uh, Patrick Mahomes could use a little bit of a better ratio here of seven to four. Caleb Williams is right behind him, looking nice. Shaw White, Jones, Travion Anderson, Deacon, J.K. Dobbins. Three of our, uh, two of our guys are in the top five. That's nice. Touchdowns, White. Trayvon Henderson, Josh Jacobs. Receptions, Cooper Cups right over Terrace Marshall for receptions. Two, two of our guys right there. Yardage wise, Terrace Marshall's killing it. Jalen Waddle Cup. Johnny Wilson, the rookie, 6'7", 237. That's so nuts. Darnell Mooney, another one of our guys. Chase. Look at this, Calvin Ridley, two touchdowns in uh, each of the first three games. Waddles, touchdown every game. Garrett Wilson, I believe, has a touchdown every game. So is DJ Moore. Gabe Davis having a really nice year as well. 
But Avante Adams has had one really big week one. Just kind of fell off a little bit there. Yep. Mondon leading in tackles. Total tackles. Solo Quay Walker. And then Joe Pearl Peppers having a nice year for us. Hargrave leading in sacks with Mike Parsons. The Darius Smith. Oh boy. See, these guys are bad. Badasses. Jeffrey Simmons, real nice year. Pose there, like one of our guys. There's Kyler Gordon playing. All right, we're not going over uh, over that. So those are the leaders. Let's take a look at top offenses. I don't. I think this includes uh, kick returns, but best offense. Oh. Yardage wise, and they've only been in the Jets playbook for two of the three games. Bengals, then the Chiefs, Bears, Buccaneers, Dolphins, Jaguars, passing yards, of course, rushing yards. Falcons are crazy. Colts, Buccaneers, Ravens, Chargers, points per game. Jags, Dolphins, of course. That, that's your record. Most, most first downs, Chiefs, then the Bears, Chargers, Jaguars, Bengals. Uh, how about defensively? <clears throat> well, the Vikings are the worst. And wow, the Ravens. They've had a tough schedule. The best are the Packers, the Browns, Buccaneers, Colts, Commanders. Looking good. Packers giving up the least amount of passing yards along with the Browns, Buccaneers, Bengals. Rams giving up the least rush. Dolphins, Chiefs, Bills, Commanders. A lot of that's D tackle. Points, Packers, Browns, Jaguars, Buccaneers, Colts, Commanders. Most sacks, the Browns of course, Buccaneers, 49ers. Some of it's scheme, and some of it's just some of it's scheme, and some of it's just the players that you have. Bills lead in interceptions, followed by the Bears, who have like no sacks. Look, they have one sack on the season, but got five interceptions. Broncos, 49ers. Um, we look at this. Third down percentage. Why they're so good right now? Bengals, way above the league average. Red zone efficiency. Just got to get the commanders in the red zone. Chargers, Chiefs. Penalties. Texans are now the most penalized team. Giveaways, Patriots, too many. Panthers, too many. They have a lot of fumbles. Yikes, that's bad. Two of our teams are at the bottom two. Bills. 0-3 team. Four with a differential. Uh, that's a couple of our teams. Alright. That's the stats. Uh, do we have anything else? Injuries. Let's check time. Alright, let's check uh, the... The injuries real quick. Blah. Big loss here for the Bears. Quan Brisker is out seven weeks. Rashid Shahid not back yet. Bengals are healthy. Uh, Eric Rose out still. Javante Williams still out. Browns are healthy. Buccaneers are healthy. Cardinals are healthy. Chargers. Chiefs, a little bit of a hit here. Neal. Taylor. Gosh, Downs is out now. Manners are healthy. Cowboys. Ooh, that's big. Zach Martin. Tolbert. Uh, the rookie that they drafted in the first round, I believe. Jordan Morgan. Ooh, uh-oh. Who's not there? The freak. Tyreek Hill. <laughs> and not only uh, are the Eagles... 
under man on offensive line, but Cam Jurgens is also out. Um, Mick Harris is out. They're really bagged up on the offensive line. Kittle's out. That's a big loss for the Giants. Jags lost to Tim, but it doesn't matter for them. Yeah, so what's his name? Comes back for the Jets. Uh, I can't think of his name, the running back. Like I said, I have mental block when it comes to names. There's so many names. Um, I think they're starting running back back. Hutch is still out. Savage and Mize are out. Oh, that's bad. Patriots. Yeah, the Patriots might be in uh, cell mode soon. You know, Gibson out. Ravens are healthy. Saints banged up on the offensive line. That's not good. Banged up for the Texans. Titans, Hill. Oh, yikes. That's awful. Vikings. Uh, and those are the injuries. Uh, is there anything else before we talk about week four and looking ahead to see the matchups? No, I don't think so. Don't think so. So, all right. Um, yeah, let's see in a couple seconds when we talk about week four matchups. All right, so week four starts in Arizona. We deem this week revenge week. There's a lot of revenge narratives. But first, the Cards try to get their second win. Seahawks looking for their first win. Our only note here is that Xavier, Xavier Leggett is now the number one wide receiver in Arizona. They're trying to get him going. They're swapping him and Hollywood Brown. See if that can get some more points yardage out of the offense. And then we go to Jacksonville and Indy. What a great game this is. It's one of the first games to go off on 1 o'clock on Sunday. Battling for the division, both 3-0. and Who's going to come out on top? Both teams have been very, very solid. Jags defense is great. Their offenses look great at times. And Indy's just been very steady, just winning games. Not overly uh, impressive offensively, but doing enough. Uh, both sides of the ball to get it done. So... What a great game this is. Then we have the Patriots. Uh, notes here. The Patriots have changed offensive and defensive playbooks. They're now in the Green Bay defense and the Jags offense. And Brees Hall returns from injury. Also, and another note, uh, Jabril Peppers is no longer the sub linebacker. He's just playing safety. And uh, they moved Marpu down there in the box. Uh, for sub linebacker. So big changes for New England looking for their first win. Then we have Dallas and New York. Only re There's a revenge narrative. A weird trade went down earlier this season where the Dallas Cowboys acquired Darius Slayton from the New York Giants for a fourth round pick. Uh, I don't know why Dallas would do that. They have so many wide receivers, but good for the Giants, I guess. Um, getting a fourth round pick uh, to help build the future around their rookie, Michael Penix Jr. Then we have Atlanta traveling to Kansas City. Not much to note here. Isn't Willie Gay, he's now on Atlanta. Wasn't Willie Gay uh, on the Kansas City Chiefs? I can't remember, I believe he was. So that could be a revenge narrative. I meant to look it up before I got on here, but whatever. Um, Chiefs are the Chiefs, and Derek, uh, Desmond Ritter can't throw, but they can sure run the ball. So let's we'll see what happens. That's a good game. I'm looking forward to it. Then we have the Packers traveling to the Titans. Ours, Tennessee Titans, do you remember them? Uh, a couple changes here for the Titans. Arden Key is now starting over the rookie. 6'5", uh, safety James Williams is now the sub linebacker. Quez Watkins is now moved up to the number three wide receiver. Uh, Keenan Allen's still in the slot, so trying to get some more speed on the field there just wasn't enough, I felt, for this offense. See if we can get uh, some bombs from Jaden Daniels. Then another one of our focus teams takes on the 3-0 Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who are just rolling with J.J. McCarthy. We got uh, a change here as well. We kind of swapped around the wide receivers for the Panthers. Hardman is now the number two, I believe. 
Marshall stays in his spot, but all the other wide receivers kind of move around. I mean, they're all four on the field at the same time, but Marshall was going, but no one else was really going. So hopefully we can get a good balance um, and some more speed on the outside to get some bombs from our uh, quarterback. Anyway, moving on. Big revenge game here, of course. You know, Justin Fields is home against the Chicago Bears. And also, um, Sweat returns for his revenge. Uh, the Commanders are now in the Indy playbook. They move from Philly to Indy. I think it plays a little bit different than in it. Um, those playbooks are the same, but I think they play different. They might have a different um, game plan. And Mostert was added to the Commanders for help on third down. And then, I mean, what a matchup we have here. Baltimore really needs a win. Cleveland's 3-0 and in Cleveland. Uh, Baltimore has a really tough start to this. I mean, yeah, they won the Super Bowl, so they have a tough start to the season. But this is a great game on paper, of course. So looking forward to this one. Some great matchups all around. Whether there's revenge or not, there's just great matchups this week. Week four is where it's at. And then we have our charges taking on New Orleans. Uh, not much to note here. Chargers are, are going to charge. Hopefully, looking for that win. Building on there. Um, Saints are scrappy, but I just don't like their cars. <laughs> so there's that. Um, but I, I want to see. I want to see more out of Herbert. So let's let's get a win there, Chargers. And then we have Miami and Vegas. Miami travels to Vegas. The return, I believe this is the return of Tyreek Hill. Uh-oh. I mean, they went 3-0 and and looked amazing without Tyreek Hill. Now they got Tyreek Hill back. Uh, that's a little crazy. Good luck there, uh, Vegas. Uh, <laughs> the playbook is phenomenal. It's a great playbook, and they have so many weapons. Tua looks great, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. what's, what's the spread on that, 10 points? Here, here's another one that should have big – Spread and uh, San Francisco three and zero as well, going to o two and one Minnesota. Uh, didn't didn't Minnesota have a big upset on San Francisco last year? I kind of remember that happening. I can't fully recall, but yeah, this should be all San Francisco. I mean, Minnesota's offense is great, and their defense, uh, to my opinion, is just not good at all. But uh, looking forward to that one, and. Then we have Cincinnati at Denver. Our Cincinnati Bengals travel to the 0-3 Denver Broncos. I mean, this should be another like 10-point spread, maybe maybe down to 7.5 because since he's on the road. But, I mean, uh, Joe Burrow is Joe Burrow. I love him in that Jets playbook, just throwing the ball, and he gets good production from Joe Mixon. So... Looking forward to that because, you know, love our franchise teams. Of course, this is another big revenge game. Both quarterbacks play for the other team. And there's a playoff rematch revenge game. So, looking good there. Uh, Detroit got Montgomery back. He was injured for a little bit. I don't think Aiden Hutchinson is back yet. But, you know, Detroit needs a win because they haven't looked great in the sim. Especially golf, but he returns home. So let's we'll see what happens there. And then we have, I just believe this is the Monday night game. No, there's one more game. This is a Sunday night game. Yeah, this is a Sunday night game. Buffalo and Houston, another revenge game for the playoff rematch from a year ago. Um, Texas really need a win, man. They haven't looked good, and uh, they're battling injuries. And Josh Allen. And Gabe Davis will look phenomenal. That offense is just on time. The defense still looks good, so tough out there for Texans. And then Monday night, man, those Eagles need a win. This is the battle of Pennsylvania as the Pittsburgh Steelers travel to the other side of the state to take on just a reeling Philly team. I believe – I didn't double-check this, should have – believe Philly started on the road three games in a row and now get a home game on Monday Night Football against Pitt. So, yikes. Anyway, uh, tell me what matchup you're looking forward to the most. Who do you think is going to have the biggest performance in week four? 
Uh, I do want to make a little note that I have upgraded some guys based off the combine, like Xavier Worthy made him 99 speed and acceleration. You know, maybe these guys would have been drafted differently if we had this information before, but it is what it is. So uh, Washington gets lucky with having its wide receiver 99 speed and 99 acceleration after breaking the record for the 40 in the NFL combine. A couple of guys got uh, increases and um, I made Xavier Leggett 6'2 because he's not really 6'3. He's more like 6'1 and something, but leaning towards 6'2. So he's still a big guy. It's super fast. Um, and that's pretty much it. I, I'm looking forward to all these games, man. I can't I can't wait to get them out to you. And um, I've already recorded them, and they're ready to come out. So let's go. Uh, let's have some fun. Please comment. What are you looking forward to? Who, who, who do you think is the best team? We'll talk about that in the uh, after the conclusion of week four. See who's undefeated still and all that. So looking forward to week four and your comments and likes and watches and all that stuff. Appreciate your support. These videos have been uh, doing very, very well, all the games simulated. So I'll see you guys soon. Have a good weekend coming up. Enjoy all the games as I release them very soon. Later.